So I'm Ju, and uh, the person I'm going to present is uh, why non-commerce, what kind of non-commerce problem are not hard? Okay. So we know in general non-commerce non problem are hard. Uh, that's, I mean, at least in theory. But in practice, actually, uh, I know, you know, people work with different uh, non-commerce problems, and they also find that um, this simple heuristic method actually work well. So in a sequence of work, we actually try to investigate what happens there. So by work out several practical examples, we actually identify a kind of very nice structure for non-commerce problems. So before we go to the example, I just want to highlight the structures. So actually very simple. Um, first of all, all local denominators should be global. Okay, that's the first property that we, uh, we like. Okay. And the second of all, all saddle points should have this kind of nice uh, typical saddle shape. That means you actually have a direction that the function have a negative curvature. Okay. So the reason that we like this kind of saddle point is that if you think of a typical second order method, you can cook up a local second order, second order model and uh, try to decrease the function value. That means you won't stay on the saddle point if you use second order method. Okay, so the first example that have this kind of structure is actually arc, it's actually very, very classic. That's the eigenvector problem. So in eigenvector problem, basically you try to optimize this quadratic form subject to that your vector living on a sphere. So if you do a little bit of calculation, you'll find out actually for this function, all the critical points are the eigenvectors, and uh, it's negative copy. And uh, if you assume a little bit gap on the eigenvalues, the top and the bottom eigenvalues, you can see more about that. Actually, all the, actually the global minimizers for this quadratic form are the bottom eigenvectors, okay, and it's negative, okay? That's the first one, all local minimizers are global. Second of all, all the eigenvectors in between, that means between the top one, that's and the bottom one, they are saddle points, and they are this kind of nice saddle points. Uh, we call it the writable saddle, <laughs> if you like. Okay. And uh, of course, this is very simple one, <laughs> and uh, I mean, very contrived one. You, you won't feel it's interesting, uh, although, I mean, it has this kind of structure. So what's more interesting is that in a number of practical problems, if you formulate your problem in in some nice way, but non commerce way, you can actually work out that your problem actually have this, again, have this kind of nice structure. So what we work out in the, last, in the past two years is one is uh, the sparse dictionary learning problem, which is very interesting to uh, people doing uh, image compression or image recognition, or even people do uh, deep learning. The second example is about uh, face retrieval. Basically, what people do in face retrieval is that you have an unknown signal, and uh, given linear measurement of the signal, but you only take the magnitude. You throw out the face information, and you want to recover the signal. Okay. So people in optical system actually worry that a lot, a, a lot. So. For this problem, we analyze a natural least square formulation, and it turns out this least square formulation again has this kind of nice structure. So the third example are uh, worked out by others. Uh, so this problem arises in uh, machine learning where people want to learn, say, uh, hidden variables, or people want to do independent component analysis, well, and so on, this kind of thing, where basically people want to do kind of generalized eigenvalue decomposition. So they, they call it a uh, tensor decomposition. Um, you can actually work out that this problem, if you formulate it correctly in some non commerce way, again, the non commerce problem will have this kind of nice structure. And uh, the advantage of having this kind of structure is that you can actually globally globally optimize the non commerce function in polynomial time. So we actually analyze the second order trust region method 
but there are other possibilities. For example, um, this guy analyzed noisy gradient method, and uh, we believe you can do other kind of things like uh, Carolina search. I know. Um, all these methods are actually classic in optimization. So, yeah, that's all. And uh, we have this uh, short uh, introduction paper on this topic. You are welcome to take a look and give comments. Thank you.